And are there, is there such a thing as good sweeteners and bad sweeteners? Yeah, so there's a few categories. So the ones that seem to be really fine for us are stevia, monk fruit, and allulose. The ones that have been linked to quite a few health issues are aspartame, maltitol, sucralose. So, for example, aspartame, you usually find it in soda. Whereas stevia, you might buy a little packet at home and put it in your tea. That being said, the aspartame is still better for you than the real can of Coke with the 30 grams of real sugar. So stevia is something that I shouldn't be... No, stevia is good. Yeah, you shouldn't be too concerned. Do you use stevia? I don't put any sweeteners in anything. I don't put sugar in anything mm. either. So I'm trying to stay away nice. from coffee. It's just black coffee. You don't even eat chocolate? Of course I. Uh, no. Chocolate, maybe not so much. Maybe that's not my thing, but... You what's know. your sweet thing? Carrot cake. Mm. What's your sweet thing? Oh, chocolate. I love chocolate. Like my favorite is, is like chocolate ice cream with a chocolate brownie and chocolate sauce and chocolate sprinkles. Anything chocolate. That's not very glucose goddess. Well, here's where you're wrong, Stephen. I'm actually not anti-sugar. What are you talking about? No, I love sugar. I eat sugar, I eat carbs all the time, but I want people to know what I know, which is how and when to eat those things. That's the end of the podcast. Thank you so much for coming. It's really (laughs) great to see you again. (laughs) (laughs) No, but seriously, we need to learn how to eat these things because they're so delicious in a way that's less bad for our health. It's not about cutting them out. That would be a diet. I don't, I'm not. I'm not pro-diets. I'm pro-knowledge. And I want to make sure people are not having sugar and dessert for breakfast. You know, sweet cereal in the morning and orange juice. That's dessert. Anyway, I'm all about just trying to empower people with the information so they don't get trapped by these marketing lies. Are we meant to be eating the amounts of sugar that we eat, though? Because, like, oh. are we meant to be eating any sugar? Is What does our sort of evolutionary history tell us about our relationship with, with glucose? I think fruit is something we're meant to be eating, but the fruit that used to exist was less sweet and harder to digest and more fibrous. And then in terms of starches, starches are totally fine to eat. The problem is today, most of us just eat sugar and starches. We've completely lost touch with the nice proteins and the organ meats and the fiber and the healthy fats. We're in a situation where the food landscape is so toxic and is so just starches and sugars that people are getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And it's addictive and it's cheap. So we're in a very difficult situation. And that's the situation that, you know, the GLP ones are trying to solve. Uh, We're in a pickle. We are in a pickle. Are you optimistic about the pickle we're in as it relates to sugar and glucose? I have to say yes, because the amount of transformations I see in my readers is really encouraging. You know, people are reclaiming their health, getting power over it, understanding food again. But we've got a lot of work to do. And I can do my work educating people from the ground up on these hacks. But we also need like systemic change. We need policy. We need governments to get involved. And we need to find ways to make healthier food because we're just killing the population right now. It's really terrible.